Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity number 14 in the Tetrix Prism Programming Guide. So, in the previous activities, we worked with the Taskbot and the Line Sensor because we wanted to make our robot smart. We looked at following the line, driving to the line. We added the ultrasonic driving toward the wall. We're going to expand on that and explore a little bit more with the ultrasonic sensor. So, this particular activity, we want to look more about avoiding obstacles. What happens when we see that wall or see something in front of the robot? What do we want it to do? So we're going to expand on that a little bit. Let's gather our material. Let's make sure we have our Tetrix TaskBot built. We've got the prism mounted on top of it. We've got our charge battery ready to go. We've got our sensor module in front. We've got our USB cable to connect the, the TaskBot to our computer. We've got our computer. We've got our software loaded on it. So let's go ahead and start by opening our sketch. Let's launch our Arduino software. Let's go up to our file option, just like we had before. Go to examples. This should become real, you should be, should be becoming familiar with this by now. Examples, go down to the Tetrix Prism. We're gonna go to the TaskBot activity 14, avoid the obstacle. Once our window opens up, I'm going to expand this and make sure that we can see everything we need to see on this and move this over to the side. So let's start like we had before. Let's make sure our comments reflect what we think our robot's going to do. Basically, they're saying that the program wants to use the ultrasonic um, in D4, the digital port 4, and drive toward an obstacle that when it sees something, we want it to actually do a different type of behavior. So let's go ahead and let's upload this to our robot. Let's go ahead and make our connection to our computer. Let's make our connection to our robot, to our prism. Remember, we have to have our robot powered on. Look for our blue light, solid green light there. We're ready to actually communicate. Let's verify it in our code that the code is correct and let's go ahead and upload that. Let's look for our data lights. Should be giving us those. Should be done. We're looking for a green solid light here. Everything's good there. Again, we need more spaces on our table so we need to disconnect and take it down to uh, on the floor where we actually can execute this. Remember, I need an obstacle uh, the wall or something that, that it can drive toward uh, at least 25 centimeters of space and I'm ready to go. So let's put this on the floor and see what it does. All right, I'm ready. Here goes nothing. Okay, did it do what we expected it to do? Hope so. If it didn't, remember our troubleshooting tips. We want to make sure, check our connections for our ultrasonic sensor. Make sure everything's good there. If we need to, let's go back and, and redo our activity, our getting started activity five, where we, we look at the serial monitor of the ultrasonic sensor, make sure that it's actually reading correctly. Once you've done that and you've got a good sensor, it's working correctly, try it again if you need to. But hopefully everything worked like it should. If it did, uh, if everything is connected right, let's look more about our uh, in our code in our sketch window and see if we've um, do anything different. And you'll see in the code if we look at it in the, our setup. That's what we've been working with all along. The prism begin, the set motor invert. In our main loop, we have an if else statement, but you can see that they're expanded a little bit. And basically, what we've done. We've got the same test condition that the if-else st statement allows us. We can use a single test condition, reading the ultrasonic sensor. And then based on that test condition, we've got two different behaviors, the if and then the else statement. But you can see that we've got with those um, different behaviors, we've got multiple actions tied to that. Rather than just moving forward and then stopping as the two behaviors, We've added to that. And you can see it's the same basic technique. 
we're just actually taking more advantage of things that we already know. In our if statement, we're turning our motors on. We're also using our LEDs on board our, our prism so that if we're moving forward with no obstacle there, we're showing a green light. If we're seeing something that um, if in that condition, we're also making sure our red light is turned off. Then on the else statement, if we see an obstacle um, within that 25 uh, centimeters, the first thing we're going to do is going to turn our green light off turn our red light on as a visual indication that something's wrong. We're going to stop our motors and we're doing this in sequence. And then based on um, after we allow our motors to stop, which is a very short delay, we're actually reversing, backing our, our task bot up. And then we're stopping and then we're doing a turn. Once we've done that, we're actually going right back up to the top and we're repeating that behavior. And it's going to continue until we hit our reset button. So you can see that now, by stringing that all together, I've created a behavior that basically is avoiding obstacles. It's going to drive forward. If it sees something in its path, it's going to stop, back up, do a turn, and go forward again. So you can see that we haven't really done anything new. We've just uh, actually added things together. We're combining stuff that we already know how to do, and we're making different behaviors. So that's what coding is kind of all about. <clears throat> so if that makes sense, let's go ahead and let's talk about some of the real world connections available with this. We, we talked in the previous activity about the fact that um, in real life now that we're seeing cars that are beginning to see um, the, the world around them and stop in case of uh, obstacles showing up that the human driver didn't see. Um, but there are also, uh, one of the things that this allows us is the, the ability to actually um, in, improve the reaction time that it takes to stop because humans have um, um, unless different reaction times. So an athlete might be, have a quicker reaction time than, um, than an older person or a person that has um, a vision problems, things like that. Um, that's why there are people that are good at driving race cars. They have a certain set of uh, reactions that they can react to things. Uh, <laughs> the machine world allows us to take advantage of the, the microcontroller and the, the microprocessing speed that allows us to react even quicker than a human can. So that's one of the benefits that this type of activity would give to um, the, the user and why it becomes a, a connection to the real world. Let's talk about some of the science to STEM connections. Because, um, again, in science, similar to what we talked about in the activity previous to this, we can talk about the physics of sound reflections from a flat surface, a round surface, a rough surface. Um, we could talk in, from technology about interpreting data and what it means to interpret that data. <laughs> Engineering, we can talk about what it takes, again, to design a, um, a system that will take advantage of that type of information. And then, obviously, from math, we can talk about what you do with that kind of thing. What do you do with the data that you get from a system that takes advantage of those kind of things? So there's a lot of different options that we could talk about that are related to the STEM uh, type of, of uh, connections or world. Where do you take it from here? Well, for the hacking the code activity, uh, again, encourage you to go ahead and try and create that sketch, uh, that sketch from scratch. Say that five times fast. Sketch from scratch. Um, and then see if you can duplicate that. And then uh, change it up. Maybe you can do a different behavior when you see the obstacle. Maybe you can back up and, and start turning right, turn left. Or maybe uh, see if you can create an arc to go around the object. Different things in, in, to actually apply what you've learned and done in previous activities. That's the whole thing behind um, this whole process of trying to gather and, and build on these uh, coding skills that you know and have learned in the previous activity. So good luck with that. Again, I hope you found that instructional, informational, and like we say, have fun, build some robots, come back and see us.